Good day everyone, my name is Emmanuel Aristoles and we are going to talk about multiplication and transposition of matrices. For our first topic, we are going to know how to do the scalar multiplication of matrices. The term scalar multiplication refers to the product of a real number and a matrix. In scalar multiplication, each entry in the matrix is multiplied by the given scalar. Suppose we have the following equation RA where R stands for a real number and A stands for our matrix. In order to do the scalar multiplication, we are just going to multiply our real number such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to our matrix. So in order to do that, R times A will become RA for our first element, R times B will become RB for our second element, R times C will become RC for our third element, and R times D will become RD for our fourth element. Let's take a look at example number one. Let A is equal to 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, and B is equal to 2, 6, negative 4, 9, 6, 1. Find 2A minus B. In order to read the elements in the given matrix, it is important for us to read it row by row because that will be very helpful in our next topic which is the transposition and vector multiplication of matrices. For our step 1, we need to solve for 2a. So again, what we need to do is we have to multiply our real number, in this case 2, to the matrix itself. So that will be 2 times 1 will become 2 for our first element, 2 times 4 will become 8 for our second element. 2 times 2 will become 4 for our third element. 2 times 5 will become 10 for our fourth element. 2 times 3 will become 6 for our fifth element. And 2 times 6 will become 12 for our sixth element. Then, we need to solve for negative b. Again, here in the negative b, we have a hidden 1. So negative b is also equal to negative 1 b. And negative 1 is our real number. So again, we need to multiply our real number to the matrix itself. Negative 1 times 2 will become negative 2. Negative 1 times 6 will become negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 4 will become 4. Negative 1 times 9 will become negative 9. Negative 1 times 6 will become negative 6. And negative 1 times 1 will become negative 1. Next step is we have to substitute the answers to 2a minus b. So again, 2a minus b is also equal to 2a plus quantity negative b. After substituting our answers, we have to add the following matrices. So, 2 plus negative 2 will become 0. 8 plus negative 6 will become 2. 4 plus 4 will become 8. 10 plus negative 9 will become 1. 6 plus negative 6 will become 0. And 12 plus negative 1 will become 11. So, our answers is 0, 2, 8, 1, 0, 11. Let's now proceed with our transpose of matrices. A matrix transpose is simply a flipped version of the original matrix over its diagonal. By doing that, it interchanges its rows and columns. The transpose of matrix A is denoted by A superscript T or A prime. Suppose here that we have a following diagram and it states that transposing a matrix turns rows into columns. That means that the dimension of the matrix will change whenever we transpose it, except if it's a square matrix. For example, 
if we have a 2 by 3 matrix and if we are going to transpose it, it will now become a 3 by 2 matrix. There are three properties of transpose of matrices that we are going to discuss today. And the first property states that transpose of the transpose is the matrix itself, such that the transpose of the transpose of A is equal to A. Let's take a look at example number two. Let A is equal to 1, 4, 6, 2. We need to prove that the transpose of the transpose of A will become A. For our step one, we need to solve for the transpose of A. So again, the transpose of A, which is 1, 4, 6, 2, will become 1, 6, 4, 2. So for our first row, it is 1, 4. And our first row, if we are going to transpose it, if it will become the column, in this case, this one. Next, for our second row, 6, 2, if we are going to transpose it, it will become the column. Again, this is the 6, 2. Next, we are going to solve for the transpose of the transpose of A. So, if we are going to transpose 1, 6, 4, 2, it will again become 1, 4, 6, 2. Hence, since A is equal to 1, 4, 6, 2, and the transpose of the transpose of A is 1, 4, 6, 2, we have now proven that, that the transpose of the transpose of A is equal to A. For our second property, the transpose of the sum of the two matrices is equivalent to the sum of their transposes, such that the transpose of the quantity A plus B is equal to the transpose of A plus transpose of B. Let's take a look at example number 3. If A is equal to 2, 3, 1, 1, negative 2, 7, and B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 6, prove that the transpose of the quantity A plus B is equal to transpose of A plus transpose of B. So, for our step 1, we need to solve for the transpose of the quantity A plus B. In order to do that, what we need to do is we have to add A plus B first. So, 2 plus 1 will become 3, 3 plus 2 will become 5, 1 plus 3 will become 4, 1 plus 0 will become 1, negative 2 plus 4 will become 2, 7 plus 6 will become 13. After that, we are going to transpose this particular particular matrix. So, if we are going to transpose it, our row will become column. In this case, our row 1 is 3, 5, 4. And if we are going to transpose it, it will become the column. Our row 2 is 1 to 13. And if we are going to transpose it, it will become the column 1 to 13. Step number 2 is we need to solve for the transpose of A plus transpose of B. So, here, we need to transpose our matrices first, and then we are going to add them. So, the transpose of this matrix, matrix is this matrix. The transpose of this matrix is this matrix. After that, we are going to add them both. So, 2 plus 1 will become 3. 1 plus 0 will become 1. 3 plus 2 will become 5, negative 2 plus 4 will become 2, 1 plus 3 will become 4, and 7 plus 6 will become 13. Since the transpose of quantity A plus B is 3, 1, 5, 2, 4, and 13, and transpose of A plus transpose of B is equal to 3, 1, 5, 2, 4, 13, then we have proven that the transpose of quantity A plus B is the transpose of A plus transpose of B. 
for our last property, it states that the transpose of the product of two matrices is equivalent to the product of their transposes in reversed order, such that the transpose of quantity AB is equal to transpose of B times transpose of A. Or if we have three matrices, it will become the transpose of quantity ABC is equal to transpose of C times transpose of B times transpose of A. Let's take a look at our next example. Here we have A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and B is equal to 1, 0, 2, and negative 1. We need to prove that the transpose of quantity AB is equal to transpose of B times transpose of A. For our first step, we have to solve for the transpose of quantity AB. And in order to do that, we have to multiply the matrix A to the matrix B first before transposing it. Don't worry too much about the process of multiplying them because it will be discussed in the next slide. So, if we multiply them, the answer will be 5, negative 2, 11, and negative 4. And if we are going to transpose this particular matrix, the answer will be 5, 11, negative 2, and negative 4. Next one, we need to solve for the transpose of B times transpose of A. In this particular process, we need to transpose both of these matrices first before multiplying them. So, the transpose of our B, which is 1, 0, 2, and negative 1, will become 1, 2, 0, and negative 1. The transpose of our A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, will become 1, 3, 2, 4. After that, we are going to multiply them, and the answer will be 5, 11, negative 2, and negative 4. Since they both have the same value, we can now prove the transpose of AB is equal to transpose of B times transpose of A. Let's now proceed with our last topic, which is the vector multiplication of matrices. Just as two or more real numbers can be multiplied, it is possible to multiply two or more matrices too. We define the vector product only for the case when the number of columns in matrix A equals the number of rows in X. The general formula for a matrix vector product is this one. Let's take a look at example number 5. Let A is equal to 4, negative 1, 0, 2, negative 8, 3, and B is equal to 6, negative 2, 1, 5, 0, 7. Find AB. The first step in order to do the vector multiplication of matrices is we have to identify the dimensions of both matrices. By looking at our matrices, we can know that the dimension of matrix A is 3 by 2, and the dimension of our matrix B is a 2 by 3. So, the number of our row in our first matrix should be the same with the number of the column in our second matrix. In this case, they are both the same, meaning they can be multiplied. In the case that the number of the rows in our first matrix is not equal to the number of columns in our second matrix, hence it is an undefined. For our next step, we have to multiply the matrices. So in order to multiply matrices and to get the first element, what we need to do is we have to look at our first row and multiply it to the first row of our second matrix. So that will be 4 times 6 plus negative 1 times 5 and the answer will be 19. To get the second element, we need to multiply the first row of our first matrix to the second column of our second matrix. So that will be 4 times negative 2 plus negative 1 times 0 and the answer will be negative 8. To get our third element, we need to multiply our first row to our of, the, of our first matrix to the third column of our second matrix. So that will be 4 times 1 plus negative 1 times 7, and the answer will be negative 3. To get our fourth element, we need to multiply our second row in our first 
matrix to the first column in our second matrix. So that will be 0 times 6 plus 2 times 5 and the answer will be 10. The process of getting the product will be the same in other elements as well. So for our activity today, what I want you to do is I want you to go back to example number 4 and perform the multiplication of matrices. Again, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Emmanuel Aristales. Thank you for watching.